Hi folks, Mike Schramke with Larry Stove Sand Equipment, America's largest selling coyote dealer. Today I thought I'd uh, put out part two of the best ways to break your tractor. And uh, had a lot of good comments uh, in the first part, had comments from customers, and I asked the staff here to, uh, to help me come up with uh, some other things that, uh, that they see that can be avoided. And uh, I'll, I'm also going to talk about uh, some safety things and uh, capabilities of, of the loader, for example. Not necessarily that you're going to break the tractor, but capabilities, capacities, and what to be able to expect your machine to do and not do. Last video, uh, I talked about, and I, I even used my handy dandy model, talking about using the loader as a uh, as a digger or a pry bar. And uh, I mentioned that somebody had actually broken these pistons on their Coyote loader, KL6010. And uh, no kidding, two days later, and I said I'd never seen that before, he was prying out a rock. Two days later, we got this tractor in. And these pistons didn't break they bent. Now, I've absolutely never seen that happen before. And it was the same scenario. The, the customer was using the, the bucket, the loader of the tractor, to try to pry something out. And uh, that is absolutely beyond its capabilities. And uh, unfortunately, that's what happened. Miraculously, he did not tweak the loader, because as I mentioned last time, once you tweak the loader, It'll never set flat, uh, flat on the ground again. The loader is still square. We need to replace these two pistons and, uh, and a couple other things. It's not, it's not too tragic, but it, it could have been. So don't do that. Um, anyway, as I was saying, I asked, uh, I asked people, I asked uh, YouTube followers, and I asked the staff. And uh, I'll run through some of the stuff that uh, came up that it was really a, a good idea. Uh, Jason, our service manager down at Murfreesboro, he said when the tractor is, uh, has a three-point implement on it, and it, you know, so it's under load, when you turn the tractor off, go ahead and set the three points back down. Uh, let the tractor rest. It, uh, there's no reason to continuously have a, a, a fully charged hydraulic system, uh, which is what it takes to keep that implement up when you're not using the tractor. So just set them down. The biggest one that I didn't do the first video because I, I wanted to spend a minute with this, your tractor, whether you bought a Coyote, a TYM, a Kubota, Deer, whatever, most probably is a four-wheel drive. Now, everything I sell is four-wheel drive. All Coyotes and all TYMs are four-wheel drive. And uh, the four-wheel drive gives the, the machine an awesome capability. It's, uh, it's great for safety on hills. When you're going downhill or you're going uphill, it, uh, it locks the wheels all holding, uh, holding force at the same speed. It obviously, if you're doing rock loading, it allows you to, to, you know, push into that pile of rocks and pick up. And of course, for regular traction in uh, mud or, you know, muck or whatever. The four wheel drive needs to be used for all of those things. What it does not need to be used for is everything else. If you're on hard pavement, if you're on, uh, you know, you're, if you're on a asphalt driveway, if, uh, if you're cutting grass and you don't need the traction of four-wheel drive, anytime that you don't need four-wheel drive, don't use four-wheel drive. What happens is, just like in your pickup truck, and, and you've all seen this, when, uh, when you're in four-wheel drive on hard pavement, it chatters. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the term I've heard for it is crabbing, C-R-A-B, crabbing. What happens is this inside turn wheel, uh, basic physics, what they are, is, attempt, uh, is attempting to spin at a faster rate than this outside wheel. And it 
when you're not in mud or whatever snow, it doesn't have the opportunity to give the slip possible to keep it from uh, shuddering and, uh, and, and crabbing. Here's what it looks like when we uh, repair this worn out front axle. This particular tractor was used in four wheel drive from the moment the customer bought it till now when we're putting an axle in it. And he didn't know, and, and perhaps we should have, uh, well, it's in the owner's manual, but perhaps we should have brought it up. And I'm, I'm bringing it up now. Uh, the warranty paid for it. It has a six year powertrain warranty, but it's, uh, it's unreasonable to expect the tractor to not suffer damage when you're continuously using four wheel drive on hard pavements. When you're using a box scraper and you need the extra torque so that the rear wheels don't spin, when you're loading rocks, and again, when you're, when you're doing loader work and you run into you know, your big pile of rocks, what gives up first is not the horsepower, it's the traction. So that's why four wheel drive is so helpful there. Plus you're going straight. Uh, the, the real thing is when you're turning on a hard pavement, you will wear the axle out. And uh, the warranty six years, which is very generous on both uh, Coyote and TYM, uh, but after six years, the, the axle won't be covered. Um, so don't do that. Use four-wheel drive when you need it. Let's talk a little bit about loader capabilities and capacities and uh, safety. This isn't an uh, issue that you'll necessarily break your tractor, but this is an uh, issue to be aware of for safety and for you know choosing the right tractor. We. We that sell tractors, no matter what brand you're looking at, always uh, talk about what our loaders will lift, loader capacity. And uh, as we know, the CK10 series is rated at 1,835 pounds. We're very proud of that number, 1,835 to full height. So does that mean, hold on. I really need to clean my truck out. Does that mean that that's my imaginary 1,835 pound rock. Does that mean that I can lift that to full height like that and, and 1,835 pounds? It does not. It does not. Changed my shirt again. Obviously I'm cutting back from a couple of days uh, worth, of, worth of taping. That rating, any rating on a tractor loader is uh, in the best possible circumstances, that rock, that 1,835 pound rock, is loaded at the front of the bucket. If I was to uh, hang somehow 1,835 pounds on the front of that bucket, lift it all the way up, the rear wheels run the risk of coming off of the ground. If I were to lift it up and drive it and turn it, then there's a, a potential catastrophe situation where the tractor could turn over. That rating, any rating on a loader, is rated at the bucket's pivot point. And things change. Um, if you are on a hill, if you're turning, if the load is not dead centered on the pivot point, like here in the picture, that's the pivot point. If you are going uphill, going downhill, turning, anything, all of that changes. If you use anything other than the bucket, and for example, pallet forks or grapples, it changes. Here, I'll, I'll show you a couple of demonstrations, maybe help illustrate what I'm talking about. It's important to know that that 1,835 pound rating or any rating on any tractor's front loader is rated in the best possible scenario. And that would be level ground, it'll lift that much up in the air without the rear wheels coming off the ground. So here's where it's not 1,835 pounds. What if you're on uneven ground? Now don't forget my rock weighs 1,835 pounds. I've got it at the pivot point right there. It's perfectly in line. 
but the ground I'm driving on is uneven. Okay. What's happening right there, I'm in two-wheel drive. This rear wheel is lifting off the ground, losing traction. And that's certainly not the worst thing that can happen. Let me put it in four-wheel drive so it goes. I'm not going to do it. The worst thing that can happen, in this case, uneven ground, loader all the way in the air, is a rollover. Please remember that that rating is, is a standard guide to use to compare tractors. It's not to compare capabilities. Lighten your load and for goodness sakes, keep your load low. By keeping the load low, See, it's a whole lot more stable. It's still not stable enough to protect you from rollover, but if I lifted that bucket right now all the way up into the air with fully weighted down, I run the serious possibility and probability of a sideways rollover. So when you're on uneven ground, lighten your load. It will not hit those kind of numbers. It won't come anywhere close to it. That 1,835 pounds, as I said, is under the best possible scenario, which is right here. This is the only place, and I'm not even moving, this is the only place I'm confident that the loader maxed out at capacity, the tractor will not roll. Anything changes from here, including driving for that matter, lighten your load, take two scoops. Um, it's a, that number, that number is, is for comparison, not for, uh, not for actual capability. And I, I think, uh, you know, hopefully you can understand the difference, what I'm saying. Here's where the loader's capacity, the capability and the rating are completely different. Anytime you take the factory bucket off you, and you put something else on, a grapple, uh, you know, hay spear, pallet forks, everything's different. The fulcrum changes. Um, right here, I've got 1,835 pounds. Uh, I, I found two smaller rocks, so they're each uh, 917 and a half pounds each. How is that for fast? 917 and a half pounds each, equaling 1,800 pounds. I bought a tractor and uh, it doesn't move the pallets that I want it to. Well, tell me how you're doing it and uh, this won't work. It's a lot like, are you capable of uh, lifting a paint can? Yeah, certainly. Are you capable of holding the paint can out here and walking around for more than just a few moments. Probably not, the fulcrum changed. The pins, the pivot pin is back here. This load is 42 inches forward, or you know, in, in the case of 48 inch pallets, forks 48 inches, everything's different. The tractor will not lift with pallet forks what it'll lift in the bucket. Uh, because it, uh, you know, again, the pivot pin, the bucket rolled back, the load dead centered onto the pivot pins is a whole lot different than this scenario right here. So if you need to uh, rely on your tractor to move pallets, think about the heaviest pallet that you're going to be using and then talk to your salesperson about what type of loader, what type of tractor can do it safely and what type of ballast. It is always a good idea to, uh, to use ballast. And as I said, at 1800, in, in the perfect scenario with the bucket, 
the load on the pivot pins, 1,835 pounds. I said at 1,836, the tractor pitches forward. Um, to, and I'm not suggesting that you add ballast to lift more weight. I am suggesting that you add ballast to improve the stability and the ability to drive on uneven ground or to make a turn or do anything that is, you know, reliant on a heavy load and a front loader. Two ways, uh, two easiest ways to do ballast, and that would be rear ballast to keep the back end under control. One, uh, you could fill the tires with fluid. We use RimGuard, which is extracted sugar beet juice. Um, depending on the part of the country, uh, RimGuard, I should say, is good anywhere. It doesn't freeze. Uh, I know in uh, Central Florida, South Florida, they use water, um, which you couldn't use anywhere else but that. Uh, some people use water and uh, alcohol mixed, water and antifreeze mixed. Problem with antifreeze is uh, the ethyl glycol alcohol that makes it antifreeze also uh, poisons livestock and pets. So if you get a flat tire, it's a very sweet taste and it's very enjoyable for the animals un until it's not. Something inert like ex extracted sugar beet juice is great. Water, only if you're in an absolute non-freeze area. Uh, but ballast, that's, that's one way to do it, is to fill the rear tires. The other way is to add an implement to the back. So if, um, or a combination of the two actually, if you were going to uh, do some heavy loader work and you know you're going to be careful, you're going to be cognizant of the uh, capability of the tractor and the implement that you're using on the front, you're going to go slow, you're going to keep the load low, you're going to do everything right. Um, you could add a box scraper, rotary cutter, one of your implements to the back of the tractor and that would also add ballast. Uh, most folks that buy a tractor from us do have the tires filled it's not very expensive, and it's, uh, it's a way to kind of set it and forget it. Um, you know, this tractor right here would gain over 600 pounds of rear uh, ballast if, if the tires were filled with rim guard. And if you hung a cutter on the back, you could approach 800 pounds, maybe 1,000, and, and, or tiller, you know, you get the idea, you get the idea. Uh, the, the point is, know that that rating is for comparison. It's for when the machine is in a perfect scenario. It's not moving. It's not turning. It's not doing anything. The load is centered right over the pivot pin and you're raising it eight feet in the air. Yeah, 1835. Anything else, any other scenario, it changes and it drops dramatically. Uh, so that's my two cents on loader lift capacity and capability and safety. As I was putting that set of pallet forks away, something else occurred to me. This isn't, uh, this isn't related to breaking your tractor, but uh, anybody that's ever owned a post hole digger, the first time they used it would have to convince me that they weren't fibbing if they said that they didn't drill it into the ground and uh, have to dig it out by hand. Um, when you're using a post hole digger, what you're trying to do is drill into the ground. You're trying not to screw into the ground. If you do not run the PTO fast enough, this will turn very slow and it'll start to drill into the ground, making a perfect cut just like that. And uh, here in Tennessee, where all we have is rocks and clay, it, it's, it's done. You, uh, if you try to move the tractor back and forth, you'll, you'll break this. Uh, there's, there's no reverse on the uh, small, well, no reverse on any of our PTOs. Um, so what then? Well, then you, you get a shovel and you dig it out. So how do you not do that? Run the auger fast, run it at an appropriately quick speed and go down, bring it up, go down, bring it up. Let it clear uh, instead of making grooves. You don't, you don't want grooves in the hole that look like that. You want it, uh, you want it smooth. So you know, down several inches, up, down several inches, up, and do that, and you will not drill this into the ground. It would make the perfect anchor uh, for, a, for a mobile home. It'd be there forever. Just a thought. Any three-point implement that you run on your tractor, if it has a gearbox, it has one of two ways of protecting the gearbox and the drive shaft and the tractor and the device itself. Uh, the standard way is this right here. Picture the drive shaft being over that. What is that? 
That's a, don't say bolt and a nut, it's not. It's a pin, it's a shear pin, and there's a big difference. That is designed to fail. That's designed to be the weakest link on the whole system. So if you're, uh, if you're cutting grass that's this high and you run over a shopping cart that somebody left there 35 years ago, what's going to break on this machine is this pin. So, by the way, buy a bunch of pins, keep them, uh, keep them with the tractor. They, they do break, and, and thank goodness they break, because uh, they're a couple dollars versus anything else. The other way is a slip clutch, usually found on heavy-duty equipment. A slip clutch does not have that pin. In fact, uh, I wonder if I could show this. This tiller, this thing with all the springs that looks like a clutch, it is a clutch. It's a slip clutch. When it hits that shopping cart, the drive line in and out real fast. You, you won't even know it happened. And that's what protects the drive line of the, uh, the heavier equipment or tillers, the you know, stuff that is prone to, uh, to run into you know, nasty stuff. Um, so not much to think about on that. But on these, uh, don't ever put a bolt in there to replace it. Uh, the next thing you hit, something dramatic will break. They're, they're called shear pins and they, uh, they're designed to break. As I walk through the implement yard, I keep thinking of other things that I could mention that won't take too long. I'm trying not to put anybody to sleep. If you bought a trailer from us to take your tractor home or if you ever use a tractor, Keep in mind, trailers, and it, I don't care how much you spend for a trailer, it's not going to have the, uh, the longevity, the durability, the uh, set it and forget it that you're used to with, um, I don't know, a $90,000 F-250, a $90,000 Silverado, whatever. Um, these do need to be checked, and they do need to be maintained, and they, they do need... Uh, a certain amount of uh, maintenance. A new trailer, uh, as you can tell, this is how we get them, this is how everybody gets their trailers. Uh, there's one on the bottom and they stack the rest and the tires are laying on the decks. So when we assemble them, uh, we use impacts and we drive the, uh, you know, we drive the lug nuts on, obviously. Um, they, they come loose, especially on new stuff. So, uh, you know, when you, when you drive away, the first time you stop for fuel or whatever, you need to retorque the lug nuts. You also need to retorque the lug nuts on a, on a, on a fairly uh, often basis. The other thing that uh, will, you know, will not act like your $90,000 F-250, the trailer wiring. The wiring that goes to the lights, the wiring that activates the electric brakes. It, uh, they're, you know, they're left to the elements. Um, they, they do as good as they can to protect but the, the fact remains, you could be driving through your yard and, and snag this and not know it until you either get a ticket or get rear-ended. Um, I really do, and I tow all the time, I mean like daily, um, I do check that the lights are working and that the uh, brakes pulsate. Uh, if you have um, a truck, hopefully you do, that has an electric brake module, you'll need to set the uh, resistance. That's an owner's manual thing. I'm not even going to try to get into that, but you'll um, you'll need to adjust the uh, the assistance of your trailer depending on its load, and uh, to activate the brakes. Very important. Fifteen seconds on a box scraper. A box scraper is a box scraper. There's no gearbox. There's no anything. What can you do to break a box scraper? Well, the two things that break on box scrapers. One would be the scarifier. They're, they're specifically made out of a, a cast iron in, in hopes that they break before the structure of the uh, device breaks. So that's, you know, and when you break these, you go to tractor supply or, you know, come here, whatever, and you buy a new one. Um, they're, they, they will break and they do break. The other thing, uh, this is a heavy duty model. This one has half inch plate steel. So all the steel around here is a half inch. And the, uh, the standard duty is 3 eighths of an inch. And where that mostly comes into play, it, first off, if you've got a, a, a 30, 40, 50 horsepower tractor, 
this w would be overkill. Uh, but you get, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100, whatever, then it is possible to break the box scraper. And I'll tell you what breaks on them. Besides the scare fire, which is going to break anyway sometimes when you hit something that you didn't know was there, is this, uh, the sheet, the, I almost said sheet metal. It's not on either one. It's box tubular steel right here. Picture that scare fire being torqued back and not breaking as quickly as you'd like it to break. Uh, the metal here can become damaged. So that, at least in my you know, opinion and what I know about box scrapers, that is the biggest difference in a uh, heavy duty. The half inch steel is less prone to, uh, to tear or to uh, disfigure at all uh, right there. So that's a box scraper. You drive out to the property, you get there and you discover that you're missing your top link pin. You want to lay your top link in here and pin it, and the, uh, the pin's gone, or any pin anywhere. And you're like, oh. So, do I go to Tractor Supply? Do I go back home? What do I, I know, I'll stick a, I'll stick a screwdriver in there. I, all I gotta do is cut this acre, and I'm out of here. Don't do that. Um, pins are pins. Don't use pins that are too small. Don't use anything other than a pin, as a pin. Um, you know, it's a, just don't. Tire pressure. Tire pressure is not uh, checked and maintained for the same reason it would be on your truck. Your truck goes 70, 80 miles an hour, and the, the tires are, at that point, uh, if they're low, they're dangerous, and they, uh, they eat the tread. Um, that's why tire pressure on a, on a truck or a passenger vehicle of any kind is really important. Tire pressure on a tractor for a different reason. What you can't see here on this RX 6620, this tire is flat. I walked by and uh, it's waiting to get it fixed. But anyway, I walked by and it had a flat tire. So what I did was I put the uh, loader down and lo and behold, it's not flat anymore. But if I jump on the tractor, I lift the loader, I drive off, I'd make a turn, then the wheel spins the tire off and you ruin the tire. And now the, the rim is stuck in the mud and you feel, you feel like a tool. Uh, so tire pressure on tractors is very important for that reason. If you have a slow leak, it's not normal. It shouldn't do that. If you have a leak, get it fixed. Plugs are cheap. Um, watch a YouTube video, learn how to plug your own tire even better. Plugs are perfectly acceptable. And if you have a leak, on a tire, if it's this tractor or any tractor, you, you fill it up and you go out to do some work. You know when you find out that you made a terrible mistake? When you have a heavy load in the loader and uh, all of a sudden the tire decides to, uh, that, little, uh, that little tiny hole that a thorn put in it now is a big hole. You lost all your pressure and the tractor starts to pitch to one side or the other. So uh, keep tires inflated. Dust covers, use them. If you take the dust cover off of your uh, plug-in port in the back, replace it. And the screw-on dust cover that came on the PTO shaft, replace that too. Uh, it keep, uh, eventually the, the grime that ends up on the PTO shaft will uh, well will work as a slow-acting sandpaper to whatever you're trying to turn. It's just a nice thing for the tractor. Just uh, you know, throw some grease on that so the next time you hook something up, it's a lot easier and put the dust cover back on. Well, a word about uh, attaching or, or uh, removing implements that have hydraulics uh, as part of their deal. The, uh, if you've ever, if you're new to this or if you've ever tried to uh, walk up to your tractor and plug in the hydraulics or release the hydraulics and it absolutely won't go and you're like, man, I used to be strong. No, it's not that. If the three-point arms are up, if the loader's up, if the hydraulic system is not at rest, uh, you'll practically never get these things coupled or uncoupled. That's a couple thousand PSI that's, that's built up there, and that includes if the tractor's not even running. Right now, with, uh, with the three-point up, there's a hard charge on the entire hydraulic system, and uh, coupling, these, uh, coupling these lines will be nearly, if not totally, impossible. Another thing is, um, 
when you put the tractor at rest and you're done, especially if there's an implement on it, let's say this, it's not really important if there's not, but if there's an implement on it, go ahead and, uh, well, the draft's up, hang on. Go ahead and let the three point down. Let the, uh, let the tractor uh, catch its breath. It wants to rest just like you do. So the, uh, the hydraulic system is not at all under charge right now. I know you've looked at these and said, what the heck are these things? Well, it kind of looks like it goes here and it looks like it's adjustable for what size you are, but what is that? Do I wear a seatbelt all the time? No, I don't. Uh, the, you should, the owner's manual says you should, uh, but, and, and I recommend you should, so for all the legal clarifications there. Do I wear a seatbelt when I'm on a hill of any kind or doing motor work? Yes, I do. The, uh, the tractor and you will almost absolutely positively survive a rollover if you're strapped in and the bar is not folded over. That's another thing. Uh, there are times that you have to have the bar down if it doesn't fit in your garage or you know, you've got a covered trailer or something like that. But uh, when the tractor's in use, uh, put the bar up, bolt it in place, pin it in place, however it's set up. Um, this tractor will, will be able to end up upside down, you hanging uh, by your waist from the seat belt and not dying. So uh, seat belt, roll bar combination, especially doing loader work and on hills, up and down hills or side to side hills. Quick thing about hills, if you have the choice, if you have the choice, now there are exceptions, uh, you know, size of hills and whatever, but if you have the choice, up and down is safer than side to side, just so you know. Use this, I'll use this old Kubota for uh, this point. When your three-point arms are not being used, don't be this guy. Don't be this guy that lets them swing free. When you go around a, a turn or you, you hit a bump or whatever, it flies into the tire, and just like that, it'll take a giant chunk out of the tire. Uh, don't be that guy. Be, let me show you which guy to be. Be this guy. Got a rubber band. All right, last one, I swear. Trouble is I walk, yeah, I changed my clothes again, huh? I got my, uh, my coyote chucks on. Yeah. Um, last one. Uh, I walk around a lot and I see things and, uh, and uh, I say, well, that's worth mentioning. This one isn't just worth mentioning. It's, uh, it's top of the list important. Your fuel supply. If you have, a, uh, if you have an engine, any modern engine, especially if the engine is uh, CRDI, common rail diesel injected, or common rail direct injected, the, uh, the fuel system in the tractor cannot accept any contaminants, and I mean any. The, um, the fuel in a CRDI engine is, uh, is pumped out at 5,000 plus PSI through a, a injector that I don't think the human eye could see how small the, uh, the diameter of the port is. And so you can imagine any contaminants in your fuel make your tractor not run. Now the, uh, the fuel filter does its best to grab all it can, but uh, it's still, we, we still see cases where usually it's, uh, well, this is the bane of our existence. It's an old diesel drop tank, like this one in the picture. If your neighbor left you one of these in his will, use your tractor to dig up his grave and put that thing right on top of him and put the dirt back on it. Uh, these, are, these are not good, they're, they're no good. They, they will rust, they will get contaminants in the fuel. Um, there's one of two ways you can, you can handle fuel supply for your tractor. Hang on one second. We have a fuel service that comes by and maintains our fuel supply. Uh, this is a 500 gallon tank. It's got a giant filter on it and the supplier supplies us with uh, fresh diesel fuel. The other way is 
wait for it, that's right, the yellow plastic fuel can. The, uh, using only the fuel that you need, I mean, and storing only the fuel that you need is one great way not to have fuel accumulate and, uh, and end up with contaminants and nasty fuel. Uh, so, use fresh fuel, either have it supplied, and that obviously is, a, is quite an expense, so that, that is probably not the way most people would do it. Uh, the other way is to hand carry your fuel, and, and that's the way to keep the fuel supply fresh. That's about all I have. I'm sorry for all the forklifts running around. Uh, that's about all I have. I, I hope this was helpful. I know it was a really long video and uh, uh, I probably lost half of you along the way. But uh, if anybody thinks of anything else that they'd like me to touch on uh, that maybe you've, you've experienced or you've, you've heard about somebody else having trouble with, I really would like to, to, uh, to help and spread the word and, and you know, make more of these. Because, you know, let's face it, you don't know what you don't know. Um, that's it. Mike Schramke with Larry Stove Sand Equipment. I appreciate you watching my video, and if you'd do me a huge favor, I'd love for you to subscribe. Thank you.